Hi, here's another Camera Lucida uh, video for you. And today we are going to be talking about how we can use the filters within Camera Lucida to basically create um, different effects with our image. Some of those effects will be to help us perhaps to simplify the image. Some will be to help create an outline of the image for drawing. And some will be to do some sort of watercolor effects uh, that we might want to use when we're doing watercolors. So the first thing you need to do is load an image into Camera Lucida, and that's normally done with your camera roll. You would uh, select a, an image uh, from your camera roll, uh, load that image into Camera Lucida, and then you would use that to obviously paint with. Uh, I've got this image here, and uh, this is the image I'm gonna use, which is a, a toy um, camper van, just to give an example. So you can see that uh, I've got the iPad flat on the surface. So I'm not worried about actually drawing this image at the moment. I'm just gonna go through the filter effects. So it might be quite useful to have a little bit of a background into the filter that you can use and the various filters you can use with images. So obviously we are in setup mode because we've got all these icons along the bottom of the screen. If we use the hand icon in the bottom of the middle, I then go into drawing mode. With drawing mode, as you know, we can we can zoom in on the picture and, and draw it accurately. And we can zoom out again if we need to. Uh, and the picture will always be in the same relative position to your drawing position. So that's why you must always be in drawing mode when you're drawing. And I've been through that about a million times before. Uh, we've got the transparency down the bottom here. Obviously, if I turn the transparency down at the moment, it's flat on, flat on the surface. So you're, you're basically the camera's not really being used, but it, this is just to show you if you can use. So filters, how do we get to filters? So the first thing we need to do is load the image, go into drawing mode, and then we get this little chest icon down here in the bottom right hand side. And this allows us to select from an array of filters here shown. Before we start going through some of these, and I've been through the color palette uh, at some depth with a series of videos previously, so have a look at those. The important ones to first of all remember are reset to original, which basically if you've had any of these filters in effect, and some of them are compound filters, so you select one filter, and when you select another one, it adds to the filter that's already loaded. Reset to original resets everything back to how it was. And the slight frustration, I would say, is that sometimes you build up compound filters only to have selected the last filter, not quite what you want. And instead of being able to go backwards through your filters or reset the last filter, you have to reset all the filters back to original. So just remember that if you select multiple filters and you have them in effect, if you wanna go and uh, go back to where you were, you've got to press the reset to original and then reinstate those filters. That's one thing to remember. The other thing is that with the filters area, this menu box here, you can mirror the image if you want to swap it left to right, right to left. You can add tick marks, which um, add tick marks for when you're printing out. You can add a small grid. The small grid and the large grid are fundamentally used for drawing. So some people like to draw to a grid. So if you add the large grid, and as you can see, this is a compound filter. So if I add a small grid as well, you can see I've got the small grid overlaid now on the large grid. So that's one of the situations where you kind of think, well, that's not quite what I wanted. In this case, I either wanted the small grid or the large grid. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to reset to original, go back and select the grid that you want. In this case, I'm going to select the large grid. So once you've selected your filters, you can go back to drawing mode, zoom in. And as you can see, the grid, for example, will get bigger with the picture, which is why it's important to be in draw mode. So everything is still relative to each other. So in this case, I've got this square here with the headlight. If I move it around, the headlight is still in proportion to the grid. And uh, just to drum that in really. Some people like drawing with a grid because you can focus on a square and make sure that you get your image relative to that square when you're drawing it. So for example, if you were drawing bottom corner here of the van, you would sort of make sure that your your line was about coming up to a, about halfway up on the grid where the sill went through into the next grid and the tire position and everything else. So it helps you to create a proportion to your image rather than trying to sort of perhaps draw it using the tracing tool. So that's, that's grids. Those filters aren't 
really filters, they're just, in a way, they're just enhancements to the drawing experience. So we'll go through these now. And again, just to reiterate, the color palette filter, which is very elaborate and allows you to select your own palette or it will create a palette based on the drawing that you've got loaded of maybe four colors, eight colors, 16 colors, very flexible. It'll allow you to mix up those colors outside the package uh, with your watercolor set or whatever, and then map those colors to the image when you actually come to draw it. Now, if that all sounds a bit complicated, it's not, uh, but it is worth having a look at my other videos on using the color palette, and I've covered that in quite some detail. So as I said, a lot of these filters are compound filters, and some of them are not. So a compound filter would be, you would select one filter, select any attributes of that filter, and then when you select another filter, it would add to the existing filter that you've got in effect. And that's quite important to remember. The other thing that's important to remember that some of these filters, if you press it once, it applies the filter. If you press it again, it applies the same filter again, and then again, and again, and every time you press it. Now you might press that five times to get quite a dramatic filter, but always remember there's no going backwards. You can't undo any of the five presses that you've made. You would then, if you if you did something wrong or went too far, you'd have to go back to reset to original and then maybe select the filter four times rather than five times. So that's that's worth remembering on all of the filters. There is no undo stage. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at the 64 colors filter. Now, if I select that filter, you can see straight away what it does. So what we've actually done is we've reduced this image. Okay, so the 64 colors filter, if I select uh, reset to original, basically we're back to how we were. So these filters, and it's important to remember, they're not destructive. So we're not changing the image, we're applying the filter to the image. And that's important to remember. If I go back to the 64 color filter, I might then like to think about using another filter in conjunction with that filter to help me create an effect. So sometimes what I'll use is the color comic book. So the color comic book, as you'll see when I select it, takes a little while and you can see what it's done. So first of all, we reduce the image to 64 colors and then we applied the comic book effect to that reduced image of 64 colors. So you can see we get this sort of image here, very blocky, almost pastely watercolory, reduced images. We're losing a lot of detail, which quite often we want, and we're creating a much more sketchy view. So you can see the detail in the headlights here have disappeared. So we've just got the highlights and the shadows shown. We've got dramatic shadows now underneath the van and we've got dramatic shadows around the wheel hubs, for example. So other things to remember while you're in the draw mode is to get rid of these controls. You can just tap once on the screen anywhere and the controls disappear. So basically by tapping on the screen once, the controls disappear, just like that. Um, if you tap twice on the screen, it zooms in to wherever you've tapped. Tap twice and it zooms out. So if I'm focusing on this area with the wing mirror, tap twice, I can zoom in, draw on my paper the detail. When I've finished drawing that piece, rather than scroll around, I can just tap twice again and it zooms the picture back to its original size. Okay, so now let's move on to some other filters. Another one that you can use quite a bit is the Gaussian filter and it's called Gaussian Blow, Gaussian Blow, Gaussian Blow, Blur. And what you do is you press that and it adds a blur effect to the image. And sometimes this filter is very useful because what it does is it blurs a lot of the detail. And when you're, when you're painting and drawing quite often, you just want to sort of focus on the blocky shapes. So by using the Gaussian Blur as one of filters in a range perhaps of filters, you can then get a much more blurry image which will then create a much limited, much more limited image. So if I use the Gaussian blur like that, so I've got that filter in effect, and then I then go to the, um, the uh, color comic book filter that we just used, you can see that basically we've reduced the overall detail of the, of the van, and we've reduced it right back to basics. So we've got very blocky shapes, We've got a lot of shadows. Um, there's no real um, smoothness between the shadows. So it's almost like a splodge 
of ink or uh, paint, watercolour, going down in places. There's splodges of ink for perhaps the, the van colours. So you can see here that the orange, the deep orange here, the lighter orange here, the blues, the, the detail in the headlights, everything is now really quite vague, blocky shaped. But obviously when you, when you paint this or draw it, you still end up with a, an image that looks very much like uh, a, uh, a camper van. And, I, and I, I guess from my point of view, I look at this as sort of moving more towards a sort of urban sketching point of view. So what you're really, what you're really doing here is you're, you're reducing the image to something that is more shape based. And obviously for urban sketching, that's great because you don't fill your head with focusing on all the little details that you see. You're focusing on the bigger shapes. So that combination of filters is, is actually quite a useful one. I use that quite a bit. Um, you can also, it's the same sort of scenario as using the 64 colors and the com color comic book. I quite often use the Gaussian blur and the color comic book. So Gaussian blur, this filter, if you keep pressing it, is one of those filters that will keep applying itself over and over again. So now I've pressed that about five times. When you press some of these filters, especially these ones that kind of add to themselves each time, it's important to write down or remember where or how many times you've actually pressed it. Because say you kind of think, oh, that's too much now, and you've kind of forgotten how many times you've pressed it, you can't undo that. So you can't go back to say four times pressing it or three times pressing it. You have to go right back to reset to original, then you have to go back to Gaussian blur. So I go once, twice, three times. So I've pressed that three times now. I'd write down, I've pressed it three times in my sort of um, logbook of filters. And then I would select color comic book, for example. So now the effect we've got with the color comic book in conjunction with the Gaussian blur times three is a much more blocky image. You can see the, the shadows reduce, the, the details in the headlights and the grill the wheels, the tires, is very, very minimal. It's very urban sketchy. Uh, the windows are just rectangles. The shadows are very uh, crude. And we've just got probably a reduced color set here of, you know, maybe you could get away with four or five colors. And these are like splodges of ink. So don't dismiss those sort of filters um, because the color comic book can move you towards having a filter that is really quite urban sketchy. Now, as I say, I, I can't undo that, um, so I can't, I can't basically go backwards from here. I could add more Gaussian blur, but because the ideal is Gaussian blur first and then color comic book, by coming back and adding more Gaussian blur, all I'm doing now is just blurring the image. So it's not really achieving anything. And if I do a color comic book now, uh, you can see it's just, it's just gonna have an effect. Um, some people may like that effect, some people may want that effect, but it's, it's too far gone now for, for, what, uh, for what I certainly use anyway. So I'd have to reset to original and we would then go Gaussian blur and uh, you know, maybe I've written it down times three. This time I'll go times four and then I'll go color comic book. So that times I, that, this time I did it four times. So I've lost a little bit more detail. Shadows are receding here. The details in the headlights uh, are very much blobby shapes and I'm starting to lose a lot of the detail of the van, but you can still see it's a van. Still very paintable and drawable. So again, I might write that down, Gaussian blur times four, then color comic book, and I get and take a screenshot of this, and then I get this sort of effect, which is great, because once you've got a note of it, you know what those effects look like. So what I tend to do is do screenshots of all the different effects at different levels, and then I load them into a paint program, and then I just over the top type in what are the filters that I use to get this effect? And sometimes I'll do half and half. So I'll have half of the image as the original image and half with the effects on it so that I can see that those filters from this image created this image. And again, if I wanna to reset to original, I just reset. Okay, so while we're hammering those two filters, the 64 colors, the Gaussian blur and the color comic book, we can have a look at using the 64 colors with the Gaussian blur. So if we select Gaussian blur, for example, and then we select 64 colors, you can see we get a certain effect. Again, all this is experimentation. This is just what I look at when I do uh, man image manipulation using camera Lucida. I am gonna be producing a couple of other videos 
where I use third-party free tools that are available uh, on the web, which produce lots of other results, and, and some of them really, really good. Some of them using the latest sort of AI technology. But again, this is, this is an effect this way around that a lot of people may like because it's reduced the image set. It's also reduced the number of colors and the detail. Um, so you could use these colors in different combinations and sometimes using one filter first and sometimes using that same filter last. So it's worth experimenting with these and basically checking which are the filters that you like. Now, if you don't write these down and do screenshots and stuff, uh, you'll basically find yourself just playing around with this all day, um, which, which is great fun, um, but doesn't necessarily get you anywhere because you can't remember really what you did. So uh, it's worth experimenting with some of these, and I'll put a list of the filters I use in the description, and then basically sticking to the ones that you know and doing a little bit of experimentation. We've only really hit two or three filters at the moment, but the ones we've used so far we're probably using a lot of other filter combinations. Okay, so let's reset our image back to original again. And as I said before, the filters are non-destructive, so we've always got the original image here. So we're gonna have a look at the next filter, which is the posterize filter, or the next filter I wanna have a look at. So posterization, uh, which is used a lot in graphic design. So if we go into posterize, you can see we've gone into a grayscale mode. So this is looking at shades of grey. Posterization is shades of grey. Okay, so the next filter we're going to have a look at is posterization. Posterization is used quite a lot in graphic design and when we select posterize on our image you can see what is happening is it's changing the image into shades of grey. So this is no longer colour, we're basically looking at grey shades and across the bottom we can adjust the number of shades of grey that we want to look at. So we could go from two shades of grey which is really black and white. Again, we'll have a look at using this for sort of line drawings and stuff, but that's an effect. And we can go up three shades of gray, four, five, six, seven. So at each level, what you're doing is you're selecting how many shades of gray you want to use. Uh, quite good for sketching uh, black and white blocky sort of images, because we're, we're basically consolidating all these subtle colors that were down the side of this fan perhaps, and we're consolidating those down to seven shades across the whole image. So any color changes in here that are close together will be consolidated together. If I go up to 16 shades of gray, you can start to see that we've got, well hopefully you can see on there, we've got slight um, shading coming in around here, along the sill, around the back here. So let's for example, select four shades of gray. So we've now, reduce this color image of this uh, camper van to four shades. So what we're gonna do is we're going to consolidate that with another filter. So if we select the color comic book, for example, you can see the sort of effect that we've got. We're almost moving towards a line drawing. So where you've got the shading around the headlights and stuff, we've just got outlines appearing now. If I, if I reset that and select posterize, four shades and we go to the black and white comic book, not the color comic book, but the black and white one. You can start to see now, because it's ignoring colors, you can start to see that we're producing a line drawing. I would say in this instance, probably way too much detail. So I wouldn't use the light, I wouldn't use this method for a line drawing at this level of detail. I'd still reduce the detail, but you can see quite clearly now that we've got the little flowers on the side of the van we've got an outline of the wing mirror steering wheel, the overall van. So what we're now focusing on is the basic shapes. So if you're doing a line wash or a, a line drawing and then painting it in afterwards, what you could do is you could use these effects to produce a line drawing and then draw your line drawing using blocky shapes. And then once you've done that, you could use one of the other effects or just go back to the original to paint in the colors. And that way you've got a line drawing and a color drawing. Now that's used a lot in these sort of programs. So let's go through the posterize. Um, I go for eight shades of gray and we'll use the color comic book. Now this starts to produce really quite a nice black and white line drawing with a bit of shading. So we've now got separation with the colors that were used to draw these 
flowers. So we've got two here and two here. So we can shade those differently. We've got the headlamp shading. We've got the inside of the van and we've got the, the shading out here for the van. So this is quite useful uh, as an effect uh, for sort of halfway, if you like, between line drawing and watercolour because we've actually got our shades of grey but we've turned the image into a very blocky image. Conversely, if we reset to the original and we go to posterize, eight shades of grey and, th and this time we go to the black and white comic book rather than the colour comic book. You can see what we've got now is a pure, almost, black and white drawing of the bus. Okay, albeit with not much detail. It's probably important at this point to sort of think about, well, if I was to just go to black and white comic book filter, you can see the effect that that has. So for me, personally, this has way too much detail and uh, I can't select less detail with the filter, it is just that filter, the black and white comic book. So by reducing somehow the number of colours or shades of grey that it's looking at, you start to reduce the number of lines. So you can see the lines around the headlights and the, uh, the flowers. This flower's lost all of its detail, so it's this one, this one and this one is still just about okay. But it's, it's, it's something that I never use on its own. I never use the black and white comic book effect on its own. Some of you will, but for me, it doesn't, doesn't do what I want it to do. So if I reset to that, to the original. So what I tend to do is I either reduce the color set to, or turn it to a grayscale, and then with Gaussian blur, then I will use the color, uh, color or the black and white comic book. So let's, let's move on then. We've reset to original, and we're gonna have a look at the posterize. We're gonna do the eight shades of gray. And this time we're going to use the Gaussian blur. So what we've done now is we've slightly blurred the image, which has basically reduced the detail that's in the picture. So if I go and look at some of these other filters now, like the color comic book, what we're gonna end up with now is a far blockier image, far less detail. So you, what you're focusing on here is just the shapes and the shadows and the highlights. Uh, I, like this effect personally for the black and white initial image and I, and I think that combination is really is really quite good or tinkering around that combination so I could reset that go to posterize select four colors then go into the uh, the Gaussian blur and then I could select the color comic book so you see each stage what I'm doing is I'm reducing the detail in the image to just blocks and I think a lot of people, when they, when they start using these sort of drawing packages, is that if you're not used to drawing, it's quite difficult just to get the blocky shapes done first, especially if you're urban sketching or something like that. So if these were buildings, this would just focus you on the outline of the buildings rather than getting bogged down with all the details. So speaking about the sort of urban sketching world that's going on, um, quite often with urban sketching, you're drawing sort of squiggly lines. So in a way, it would be quite nice to reduce the straight lines to squiggly lines because we don't really use that many straight lines in, in urban sketching. So what I could do is I could posterize to maybe four shades of gray. Then what I can do is I can use the Gaussian blur to reduce and knock out some of the detail. So that combination in conjunction now with the black and white comic book, you'll start to see that we're starting to get squiggly lines. So this is almost becoming a line drawing. So you can see that we've lost a bit of detail over here, but basically the lines are no longer exactly straight and they've got curves and wiggles and all sorts of things going on, especially around here, which of course you'd have to interpret yourself. Um, you can see that basically uh, we're reducing this image now down to a sort of sketchy type image. So this is quite a good, a useful filter combination to create like a sketch. Again, experiment with your own um, filter combinations, but again, this is used quite a bit. Something you might like to try before you start in the drawing mode is to adjust the contrast and other aspects of the image before you start using these filters. So if we go back to the setup mode, you can see on the bottom right here, we have an icon and that icon has got sliders on it. And so for example, on here, I can adjust the brightness by using this slider. I can also adjust the contrast and the saturation and the gamma. 
so I might be over exaggerating this image. One, one problem I've got with this is that this top area is very dark, so they tend to blend in together, and the outline of the bus isn't contrasty enough really to the background, which is this sort of marble kitchen surface. So you can see that this, this toy on the, on the surface wasn't really contrasty enough. So if I, if I use that, I'm now adjusting that image to make it more enhanced. If I now go into drawing mode, and if I use uh, the same filters that I was using before, I'll get different results. Okay, so let's, let's load in a different picture and work on something else so that we can see some other effects. So if I go back to the camera roll, so I'm going to select a picture of this guy here who is um, a mod on a scooter and I'm gonna position it to where I would want it if I was gonna be drawing. And I might adjust some of these brightness and contrast sliders and then I'll go into drawing mode, which drawing mode, as we know, is this, this middle button in the bottom, bottom here. So now I've got access to my filters. So using a completely different picture, I can go into my filters. I can go down to posterize, which we know will grayscale it. And we've got now eight shades of gray. So you can see the tonality in the face, for example, of the different shades. So if you were, if you had some pens or uh, brushes that were using different shades of of grey, you could start to see the tonality of the image rather than get distracted with the colours. And if I then go into my uh, the colour comic book, for example, you can see we've got a very posterized and contrasty, blocky image, still identifiable as as somebody perhaps on a scooter, but with very much reduced detail. So we've really sort of just reduced it to just the image now you can see we've still got these sharp lines. And we've got the sharp lines because we didn't use the Gaussian blur. So if I go back to my posterize and we then use the Gaussian blur and then we use the color comic book, you can see we start to get some more curvy lines. So by using these filters in combination, you'll find that you can get the effects that you want. I mean, automatically anyway, the image is quite blurry, for example, down here. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's one of those images that you, you would have to work out the best combination. So that's the posterize and the 64 colors. The sepia toned filter is just literally a sepia toned filter. So it is a sepia toned uh, image. And the grayscale is taking the color image and converting it to a grayscale, which obviously is just black and white. Uh, so, but we could use that as the base of a filter so we could then go into the black and white comic book. So you can see straight away that because of the tonality and the ranges within this image, I'm starting to bring out a line drawing, but uh, basically because of the quality of the image, I'm losing a lot of the detail, but I've still got something. So if you're doing a color wash, uh, perhaps doing the colors before the pen and ink or, bef or putting in a rough outline of the image in pen before doing your color wash. This again would be a useful way of being able to get a, a black and white pen uh, and ink image. So I'll just reset that. I could also use the 64 colors, which as you can see is starting to reduce the skin tones and the tonality of uh, the guy's sweatshirt, etc. So that's the 64 colors which we've looked at. And I could use that with posterize. So now I've got eight shades of gray with the image that was um, reduced to 64 colors. So the next thing we're gonna have a look at now is the grayscale options that we've got. So we're gonna have a look at combining some of the filters together to create different effects. So with our um, camper van picture, we're gonna select grayscale, which turns the picture into a, into a grayscale black and white image. We're then going to select posterize and we're gonna select 16 shades of gray. So you can see that on the picture now. And then we're gonna select a Gaussian blur, which will slightly blur the picture uh, to create a sort of a more blocky image. And then we're gonna do the comic book uh, black and white. So this is the comic black and white comic book effect. Okay, so you see this effect. What we've got now is a squiggly line, um, sort of urban sketchy type picture. Uh, I use these effects quite a lot because they are um, quite good at creating a nice outline, but at the same time, 
you've still got the overall impression of the image. So you can see it's still maintaining some of the detail, but we have gone quite obtuse with a lot of the line work. So we're getting the overall effect of the camper van, but without getting too much into the detail. So this is a great base for a line and color wash because you can either put this line work on after the color wash or before just to fill in some of the details. Sticking with the grayscale options, we're going to now skip out the Gaussian blur stage to see what result that has. So again, if we select the grayscale option, no options on that, it's just grayscaling it. Then we go to the posterize again, 16 shades of gray. And then we're gonna apply the uh, black and white comic book without the Gaussian blur. So you can see in terms of contrasting this to the previous result with the Gaussian blur, it picked up far more detail. So this, this is kind of quite nice for some people because they like to maintain a lot of the detail. So in, for example, in the headlamps and a lot of the roof rack and a little basket in the roof rack and a lot of the window detail is still there. Whereas uh, with the addition of the Gaussian blur before the black and white comic book effect, we had much more of an outline urban sketchy. So this is still quite sketchy, but we're maintaining a lot more of the details. So again, horses for courses, if you kind of like this effect rather than the other one, then for an outline, use this one. If you prefer more of a blocky image, you know, you can always try the other one. Okay, so let's look at some more sort of sketchy drawing type effects that we can use. So in this, this instance, what we're going to do is we're going to use the posterize and we're gonna select maybe three levels. So very contrasty as you can see. Then after that, we're going to add on the effect of the Gaussian blur. And this time we're gonna press it twice. So now we've added two layers of Gaussian blur filter onto our posterized filter. And then after that, we're going to use the black and white comic book again. Okay, now you can see we're getting far more abstract with our picture. It doesn't lend itself this effect to all pictures because obviously we've got quite a lot of shadow underneath the camper van, which is sort of changing the shape of the object. But as you can see, we're well into the wiggly line drawing mode now of a lot of the urban sketching type um, drawings, which don't have nice straight lines, they have wiggly lines. Um, so, but this still gives you a really good basic shape if you're drawing something. And if you get your image right in the first instance um, without too many shadows, you'll still pick up a lot of the detail in the shadows that you wouldn't have picked up otherwise. So what we're doing here is we're using the posterize to reduce the number of uh, grays down to a very minimal level then we're blurring the image a couple of times to get rid of a lot of the detail and produce these sort of squiggly lines and then we're applying the black and white comic book effect so sticking to the posterize filter let's try and get another effect with the black and white outline so we're gonna this time select posterize but we're gonna select 12 12 shades of gray this time so you can see all the different subtle shades of gray up to about 12. Now we're gonna select the black and white threshold, which is a new filter we haven't used before. So if we click the black and white threshold, you can see that it turns it reverse way round. So we've got black is white, white is black. Because these filters are additive, if we click the black and white threshold again, it'll inverse that back to the right way around. So having a look at this one now, you can see that we've, we've got some lovely detail here as a pen and ink drawing. So we've managed to maintain most of the outline of the actual van, even the tires, separating out the shadow, the headlights, the grill, and a lot of the detail. So this, this combination is really, really useful for creating a pen and ink outline. So we're talking about posterize, a black and white threshold, and we're selecting black and white threshold twice. So this is the black and white threshold. So by selecting it the first time, we invert the colors. And by selecting it the second time, we invert it again back to our pen and ink drawing. And as you can see, when you select the filters, you do get a little preview of what each filter will actually do. So in this case, it's gonna turn it back to the black and white inverse again. And every time I select it, it will then reverse it back again. So now we've gone to the black and white uh, reversed round. And if we select it again, we reverse it yet again. 
And you can see the black and white normalize here, the sort of effect that's going to give you the equalize uh, and some of the other effects. Okay, so I think we've hit the filters um, in a big way, but you can see with this small example of how you can use filters in combination to create the sort of effects that you want. So we've looked at a really good way of creating your black and white line drawing and some of the color ones. What I'll do is I'll end this segment with looking at creating perhaps a, a color wash for your pen and ink drawing. So one way we can do that is we can select the 64 colors, which reduces our color set down to 64 colors. And then we can also then layer on top of that the color comic book uh, filter. And as you'll see now, what we've really got is a very high contrast color wash with bright colors. So again, you know, relating to the sort of urban sketching sort of thing where you do have lots of bright colors, this gives you a great uh, combination of your original image, really enhanced with the colors, but still maintaining the original image. So this effect in combination with the posterized black and white threshold times two effect gives you both the, the image of the color and also the black and white line drawing. So what I would do is perhaps use this photo um, effect, combination effect when I'm painting. Now, if I wanted to then put a line drawing on top of that afterwards, I would go back to my posterize. I'd select my 12 shades of gray and then I would go down and select the black and the black and white threshold times two to reverse it twice. And then what I've now got is a nice sort of pen and ink image that I could use with a fine liner to go over the color wash with some of the finer detail. So I wouldn't have to use all of this detail, but in certain places it might be nice, perhaps with the flower outline, perhaps with the tires, the headlamps, the grill especially, and uh, some of the little effects and details that you may want to pick up. So now you've got a combination of both a line work image and a color image that you can use on separate runs to create maybe the line work first, then the color wash, and then go back with a bit of line work detail afterwards, or put the color wash on first, and then use the, the line detail just to fill in some details afterwards. So those two effects are the ones that I think are, are really useful and worth remembering and jotting down and experimenting with. On that last theme of creating the color wash, sometimes you want a sort of higher contrast, punchier uh, painting and with lots and lots of bright colors. For that, what I would suggest you do is you select your 64 uh, colors, and instead of going straight to the comic, uh, the color comic book effect, I'd go to the Gaussian blur to reduce some of the detail and then go to the color comic book. If you contrast that to the last effect, you can see that we've, we've lost a lot of the detail, but in a way we've created a much uh, more abstract type image that still very much resembles the camper van, but with less detail. So faster to paint in a way, but you can experiment with the colors. We've now got some bright blues and yellows and oranges. We've still got the detail in the lights and various other places. So the, the addition of the Gaussian blur is really worth remembering because that's the Gaussian blur, every time you use it, is reducing the detail in the image. So if I go 64, 64 colors again, and this time we go twice with the Gaussian blur because it's an addit, addit, it, uh, get my words out. It adds the filter to itself every time you press it. We can then use that say twice, go to the color comic book, and you can see that we, we've sort of reduced the detail yet again. So now we've got squiggly lines, a lot of squiggly lines. We're starting to lose detail in perhaps the grill and the lights, but we've still got those details. And it's far more of an urban sketchy, loose format image. So what we could do is we could use that image. Uh, as a result, we could then add into the, the other effect, which was to get the line drawing, which as I say, would be posterize, perhaps 12 shades of gray then selecting the black and white threshold. So again, the black and white threshold will invert it. And then if you press it again, it inverts it back. So now we've got a detailed line image. So you could perhaps sketch out the detailed line image first, and then you could go to the, um, you know, having done that first, you could then go to your 64 colors. You could then use your Gaussian blur, perhaps twice, and then you could go to the color comic book. 
and then you've got your color wash that you may want to put on. So you may want to put the color wash on loosely first on top of a pencil or just directly on the paper and then add the details afterwards or vice versa, entirely up to you. But with those two effects, even just those, those two areas that we've just looked at, you've got a full combination of different ways you can use Camera Lucida to enhance or change your image so that you've got more ideas for painting styles. Okay, filters. Camera Lucida filters, very useful. Uh, they're all built into the software, so why not use them? I will be covering some videos that look at um, third-party uh, graphic online web-based software that you can upload your images to and create even more effects um, that you may find useful. Anyway, I'd I hope you uh, like this video. And if you do, please like it as you do. And um, perhaps um, subscribe to the channel because I'm doing plenty more Camera Lucida um, sort of tutorial videos that may help you use the software. And I'll be going through lots of these sort of things that help you understand how to use some of the facilities that are already built into Camera Lucida. So once you've got set up and everything, it's well worth understanding all these effects because they're all built into Camera Lucida. And um, sometimes when you want to do something, the filters are very useful because they can let you focus on things like grayscales or more often than not that I use it for it would be to create outlines for pen and ink and color washes for um, coloring in or basically doing a watercolor over the top of the pen and ink or vice versa, the color wash first and then doing the pen and ink subsequently afterwards. Thanks again for tuning in and if you're still watching this rather lengthy video, well done, congratulations, you've got a lot of patience. Thanks again for watching and I hope to catch you on the next one. Cheers.